How do you feel when you get battered 5-1? Uh, not so good. <laughs> but life goes on. <laughs> you know, there's a lot worse off in... Uh, we just have to, um, you know, like I say, regroup and, and start again. Um, how are you looking ahead of tomorrow night? Like, night only injury contest. Just a couple of sicknesses, didn't you? Yeah, we've got a bit of a bug going round. Uh, one or two lads... Um, I haven't been in for a few days now, um, but we, you know, you just don't know with them. They clear up overnight. Thing it depends if they can eat stuff and you know what have you. Um, Victor's training now, so you know I don't really know about him yet either. He, you know, he's looking uh, on song and back to normal. So it uh, just gives us a. We've just got a few decisions to make, really, in that. You know, in it. And we've got two tough games. You know, we Wolves away Saturday, so I'll be I'll be thinking about that as well with my selection, because you know, one or two lads have played a lot of games at the minute. Uh, Bobby Reid, really knee healthier, back to feeling healthy. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Pelts is probably worse, the worst one, like, but he's, he he ate something yesterday, and so hopefully, hopefully he didn't bring it back up today. <laughs> um, so, how much an impact did that have on your players, that sort of scoreline? You've rarely been beaten that heavily this season. Well, you said that, you know, Man United, Tottenham, not many times you get, you know, we've been beaten quite a few times like that. It's capitulated like we did, it's, you know, it's, it's not, not really uh, very good, but it just shows the strength of the group when they keep coming back from Marlins like that, you know. Um, I must admit that it was difficult. The half time, you know, having had such a clear penalty not given uh, and could have come in at 1 1 and the place buzzing and looking forward to the second half, to a, to the everybody's chin on the floor. It's all right saying you've got to lift them, but it is hard. For, you know, when you know you, you've been, you know, almost, I've got to be careful with my words, haven't I? But, um, you know, you've, you, it's so difficult, things like that. People don't realise what it's like to. To uh, have something like that at the last, you know, last few seconds before half time, and then it, make me, it makes it worse when the, the referee says he's made a mistake after the game. You know, that's not not helped me, has it? That really. Yeah. So what happened when you spoke to Simon Newper after the game? He said it was before I got cracking. I've looked at it. He says, and it's a stonewall penalty. I mean, wow. I, d I just don't know what to say. Things like that. It's. Um, it's just so disappointing, really, you know. I, I mean, the referees were changed in midweek. We had Roger East, and I saw th him give three penalties that were nowhere near as bad as mine. So I suppose now it's not just who you're playing, it's who you're getting refereeing and their interpretations of the laws of the game, really. It's, uh, it's coming down to that, really. And that's why it's important that I think VAR as soon as possible, really. I know it'll make mistakes. And I wasn't convinced they were right yesterday with VAR in the game I watched but um, it's got to be it, they've got to have help if if you can't get simple decisions like that for me that was as simple as you're going to get Murphy's penalty and if you can't get things like that right I mean uh, I don't I don't you know have an helpers there's some positives to take from the weekend away from your game I guess is, is that Fulham lost and Southampton <coughs> lost <coughs> yeah you said that um but you only focus on your own game, you know. I mean, if you'd have said to me, I don't know what date it is now in February, but we'd be, at the start of the season we'd be out of the bottom three, you know. I know, you know, you expect that Southampton will get points uh, on Wednesday, so, you know, we, we could probably end up the week in the bottom three. But, you know, to be in this situation, I, I can only praise the lads, really. Um, and we have had loads of disappointments and kicks in the teeth, but we've bounced back, you know. And Saturday was another one, really. It was a... It was humiliating in the end for me because it, it wasn't that kind of scoreline. But, you know, in the end, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's very disappointing. What do you make of Everton, that is, so soon after Friday night, isn't it? Just a small gap. <clears throat> what do you think their strengths are going to be? Well, they've had 19 days without a game with the computer, so I would imagine they'll be very, very organised and ready for, to, for, for, to compete with us and the manager. Um, you know his structure is always you know he, he works very hard on the training ground so I would imagine with the players they've got you know we saw them have a very good game against Watford who, who beat us five and they weren't far behind they could have won on the day really so uh, another you know I class both these teams in the same sort of bracket really in that type of team in the league When you look at these games coming up so you've got Everton Wolves uh, West Ham and then Chelsea and Man City and then you've got difficult games at the end of the season. But you, do you look at games and think, right, we can get points there, we can get points there and 
Does that? Yeah, we do. We'll, we'll look at cl- uh, to clusters of five games and um, we set ourselves targets on what we can get in those games, really. And, uh, and we are not quite there at the moment with this five, but we've got this one game left in the first cluster. And then the second group is the same. So, um, you, know, I think, you know, I think it's not a bad shout that to set yourself targets. Did you watch the games yesterday? Did you watch the League Cup final? Uh, yes, I watched, I watched uh, part of it. What did you think about the situation with the Chelsea keeper Kepa not coming off? Um, I thought that was a, a, a question that was going to be raised this morning, if I'm honest. <laughs> I bet in every press conference in the country. I think, I mean, I think you've just got to... Um, you know, you've got to leave it up to the up to the manager. Whatever he says, you know about the situation. There's only those people close. It's all right from afar making decisions. You don't know what the young lad's thinking. You don't know communication-wise, language-wise, you name it. There's that many things, isn't there? So, I think you've got to be really in the know-how to make a judgment. I'm not in the know-how. I would just be guessing. You know. Have you ever been in a situation like that where a player's Refused. It looks like a player refused to come off. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think anybody has. I don't think anybody in in the Premier League's ever probably ever seen anything like that. Really, it's, it's a, you're always, you know. I don't even think the referee knew what to do. Poor old John. I think he ran across to try and get some help. Um, so, but I, I thought he did well yesterday, John. By the way, I've criticised him in the past few years, but I thought he refereed it very well. Um, but I know I, I just don't I don't I don't think things like that happen really. It's, it's on the day, isn't it? If he says that um, he thought he, that he was, it was just his injury that he was concerned, then then fair enough. Um, if it, if it was more to that, then then obviously it's a difficult situation uh, for the manager. You've spoken so warmly about the fans here at Cardiff, um, but on Friday night, quite a few fans did. Leave early? Were you surprised at that? Or was that Not really. No, I think if they got buses and that, there were nothing much to stay for, were there? Really? I mean, the ones stayed and give a, give the lads a bit, you know a bit of a help, but um, it was so disappointing the second half, and uh, so I think they were just saving themselves for Tuesday. I think they decided to save their energy for Tuesday. It was a foregone conclusion, I think, in the second half. And just finally, away from football, there's the interim uh, crash report later. Uh, from the uh, accident investigation branch. Is this going to be the, the first step into Emiliano Salas' family, I guess, finding answers? To be fair, I, I, I just leave everything now to other people at the club now in regarding anything other than football. So I'm sure that the club will, uh, you know, will be asked for their opinions and, and Mehmet, as he has done all, all through, will, will, will give a constructed opinion on, on what the club feels. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Neil, how important is it to get Camarasa back in the mix now? Yeah, I mean it's very much important. A very important player to us. It's um, it's been a really big disappointment, if I'm honest. Uh, I've never come across the situation that I've got at the moment, which you know we're we're having um, um, physios and medical people from abroad, more or less telling us what we can do with him when he's our player. So it's uh, it's very difficult. Um, for me, not just for me, but for the medical staff as well. You know, um, when you see somebody flying around and yet they're not fit, it's because the the scan shows something up. And I think it's down to the player really to to know when he's. You know, if you saw, I think I mentioned it in the last brain conference. If you saw Sol Bamba's um, scan on his thigh, he wouldn't have played the last six weeks. Probably being our best player, and he tells me I'm all right, Gaffer. And I think that's. You know, it's the way makeup of certain players are stronger than others. But as far as the club are concerned, Camarasa is is okay and has been okay. Well, we think we think he's closer to fitness than what his guys think. You know, that's that, that's a, it's just an opinion. But then obviously, you run the risk of if you make him play and he do, if he breaks down, what they're going to say, you know. But I think if these last two games had been life or death for us at the end of the season, I'd have been disappointed if he hadn't played. Is it down to him then to, to say? Not really. I mean, he, he obviously listens to his he obviously listens to his physios and, and medical people and Tom Dick and Harry from abroad. Um, there's nothing we can do about that, really. I think probably a lot of players are like that in the in the Premier League at the minute. Are they with him over in Wales then, or? Does he yeah, they're over here. Yeah, some of them. Well, they come over here, then you know, obviously um, they might be based over there. Come over here and he has treatment with them as well. As well as our lads, you know, it's confusing, really. But you're hopeful now, from what you said earlier, that 
that perhaps he is close to? Well, definitely, yeah. I mean, I thought he was fit 10 days ago. So they've said that they didn't want him playing for 10 days. So 10 days is up today, I think. And Nias can't play against his parent club? Yeah. Uh, that's a disappointment for you, or how do you see that? It is, but I think it's, you know, I think Ken's been really busting the gut to, to play a game, so I'm looking forward to seeing him play, really. Yeah, because he's done well in recent weeks, hasn't he? Yeah, very he's much so. About the, the... Not just in the, when he's come on as a sub, but in training he's been excellent. So it's a, it's a big game for him. Not expectations, can't be too high on him, but, you know, I think, uh, I think it'll be a, you know, uh, it'll be an opportunity for him. After a real few months of, of uh, toiling, really. You know, we've seen time and time again that your side responds to sort of uh, you know, knockbacks and setbacks. You know, are they a side that they're at their best when their backs are against the wall? Yeah, I mean. I think all along, you know, we've known we've been in a battle. It's it's frustrating. Certain things haven't, haven't, haven't gone our way, which could have made things easier. You know, some of the goals we've conceded and decisions that we've not got, it could have helped us a little bit, but it's it's not been like that. So we know that we're up against it, really. We, we're we going to get no help from anybody whatsoever, and we have to do it ourselves. I think it's obvious to us that now, and, and we've got to close our ears, um, we're going to have days like Saturday when you look at some of the teams we play. We're going to get beat five, I would think, if we defend like we did um, on Saturday. But, you know, we're still in there. We're still, uh, we're still punching probably above our weight and, and making a few clubs around us still nervous. And people like Sean and, and Sol in the dressing room doing a lot of your work for you, I guess, must be important. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're both good leaders, and Aaron uh, Gunnarsson, the, the, the three of them sort things out between them um, it was good to get for Moza to get 90 minutes you know a difficult 90 minutes really for him because you know when you've won two on the trot and you come back in and you get beat five it's easy to criticise him really but you know when you look at the goals we conceded and, and uh, I think there were far worse situations than Moza on Saturday um, but you know that's that's life I'm afraid Do you think if Lee Peltier had been, had been well that Sean might have not, not started. No, he wouldn't have started. No, I think that's true to say. We worked on that on, on Friday, but as soon as, you know, Pulse went down, it was decided. I asked Moser if, he, if he'd give us an hour, and he ended up playing the full game, really. You mentioned Marco Silva. Do you think he gets an unfair stick from Northrop? I think, I think we all get unfair stick. <laughs> I don't think it's anything for him. Um, but I think, obviously, there's different... Um, Every club, there's different expectations <coughs> with fans, you know, and, um, you know, fans demand, some demand a nicer style of football, um, and the grass is not always greener sometimes, you know, but he's a, he's a nice, nice young man, and when I met him and his staff are good, um, it's a good club, they've got some good players, um, and they'll be expected to be them or, you know, likes of Watford, you know that seventh position, possibly Europe, is is well within teams. The, the teams like Everton and Watford's grass, really, with the with the players they've got, and the expenditure, really. When you look at the expenditure that these clubs have done, dear me, it's uh, you know it dwarfs dwarfs us, doesn't it, really? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Thank